areas of the brain involved in sex and love. Inside an MRI machine, subjects are directed to think about their lover by looking at his or her photograph. As they do, their MRI lights up with regions of intense activity. An entire brain system devoted to love. By two million years ago, we began to build this very large cortex. And then suddenly, sex and mind became interconnected. These brain systems for the sex drive and for romantic love are woven deep into primitive parts of the human brain. Humans forever changed sex with the evolution of love. And now, humans are going a step further taking our evolution into our own hands and separating it from the act of sex. Sex has become futuristic. There's all kinds of ways now to basically bypass sex. We can clone individuals in a petri dish. There's all sorts of ways to fertilize individuals without engaging in intercourse. What is occurring today is that biology is beginning to manipulate those processes to alter its own self and to take control of its own future evolution. So it's becoming a very conscious thing and 100 years, 200 years from now as we move forward, the process of human evolution is going to be directed by human choice. Gregory Stock is a biophysicist and the author of a book entitled Redesigning Humans. He is an advocate of human genetic engineering. And I could see a time when it's viewed as just kind of careless to conceive of children by the old ways, where it's just some random meeting of egg and sperm. How could you be so careless about something as important as a child? Stock believes the logical first step will be genetic screening, a process in which couples will be able to bring their sperm and egg together in the lab to generate multiple embryos. Then pick the one with the most desirable traits. So I think it'll be the parents will make choices about their children that are a little bit different from themselves, but really resonate with their own personalities. If they're really outgoing, they'll want children that are outgoing. If they're really conscious about their own intelligence, they'll choose kids that have a little leg up in that realm. If they're really athletic, they're going to want an athlete. And I see an enormous diversity as we go out into the future. We already are living in the age of engineered reproduction. The first so-called test tube baby is now in her 30s. Successfully cloned animals include the mouse, sheep, cattle, cat, horse, and chimp. Theoretically, the technology to clone humans exists, but hasn't yet been used. For stock, a future of engineered humanity would simply be a new phase in evolution. Consciousness having evolved to the point where it can chart its own future. As you begin to have meaningful choices, things that can be done that people consider to be of value, for instance, a genetic screening so that you're, you can be absolutely certain that your child is going to be very, very healthy, then I think you're going to get these technologies used in a very, very broad fashion. Natural selection has made some bad choices in the past. An awful lot of people have very bad backs. They've got bad shoulders. They pull out various parts of the body because it's not yet perfectly evolved. And if we could make some changes in selection so that we get rid of genetic diseases, it would be an improvement. As humans move to take the reins of their own reproductive evolution, a vital debate has begun. Genetic engineering in humans is a very risky activity. The problem is that by introducing variation, we might not know what all the consequences will be. We may insert a gene that we think causes one effect, but in fact it will cause other effects and disrupt the normal functioning of our chromosomes. Of course there are going to be problems. There are always problems with using technology, especially potent technology. 
but that doesn't mean we shouldn't go there. It's going to be a very messy, a very chaotic, a very unpredictable process. And to me, it's just the next stage of evolution. Taken to its logical extreme, in the future, the act of sex may have no place in human life at all. But for most scientists, the thought that the human animal would drop a behavior that is the product of millions of years of evolution is highly remote. Genetic engineering is far from the end of sexual reproduction. We are far from evolving beyond sex. I don't think that's ever going to happen. As long as there is life, it seems there will be sex.